Welcome to another edition of the Dementia Care Partner Talk Show. Now, here's dementia care expert Tifa Snow and your host, Greg Phelps. Hello and welcome to the Dementia Care Partners podcast brought to you by IMP. You or your loved one could be just one telephone ring away from a scam caller stealing thousands of dollars. That's why engineers built the IMP system, the smart call blocker for landline phones. IMP stops 100% of unwanted landline calls before they ring. For more information, go to joinimp.com. I'm your host, Greg Phelps, along with Tipa Snow, who is fresh off a recent trip to Australia. And Tipa, I'm hoping you can share some of your adventure with us, and that will be question one. But I'm also curious about what you learned, because one thing I know about you is you're constantly curious. Have the Aussies come up with anything that we should be knowing about, copying, improving? Uh, Where are they at? Well, they're down under. (laughs) That's what they refer to it as down under. So I've got new mates, you know, I've got new friends over that way. So I've learned that sometimes what we think we say is a little different than what they say over that way. So we've learned there's some word matches and some word mismatches. So that's sort of important. Um, But we've learned they're also not exactly English and UK-ish either. I mean, they've got their own slang about things. And so uh, there's a name for a sheep that makes no sense, but it's in Walsing Matilda, and I didn't even figure that out till I realized suddenly I don't actually know the first verse of Walsing Matilda. I know the chorus of Walsing Matilda. <laughs> and so you should definitely say to everybody, I know the first verse of Walsing Matilda, and then pause and realize, no, you don't. You have no idea what the first verse is. And then it's filled with words like Billy Bong and a tree that I can't pronounce and and uh, uh, a jumped uh, something or other. And it's a, a jumbuck. A, a jumbuck. Jumbuck. There yes. you go. See, I should have brought you along because I was in trouble. <laughs> so, you know, um, what we also learned is they're a multicultural nation, which is really, I mean, if you ask about curiosities, I mean, they have people from as many different cultures as we do here in the States. So... Your experience down there and listening to an accent and totally different language, does that relate anything at all to maybe something like a person living with dementia? Would it be similar in any way? Yeah. So, you know, sometimes we were a little slow to catch on because they would say, like, for instance, there are rules in care. So this was a surprise for me. You know, we're talking about, you know, Tifa's surprises. Um, when someone starts to fall, it's actually against policy for you to try to do anything other than maybe maybe try to protect their head. But if you hurt yourself, you're responsible for what you how you injured yourself and you'll have to be reported. And yet I know by virtue of working with human beings that if you're within arm's reach of me and I start to go down, the only way you wouldn't try to help me, I mean, it's a, it's instantaneous, spontaneous human reaction to try to, to reach out and, 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 and stabilize. The only way it wouldn't happen is if you didn't care. <laughs> and the idea that, okay, so we're going to hire people who are comfortable not doing anything for someone when they fall. What do you think about that, Greg? Well, that doesn't work for me because my my own personal experience is if I'm within arm's length of you, I will probably have a 90% success rate in either stopping or at least slowing the fall and and preventing some serious head injuries. Yeah. So, So that one I found sort of interesting because when we were trying to explain how walking with someone using hand under hand support and they say, well, we don't hold hands when you walk because if they fall, you'll go down with them. And it's like, okay, well, with this hand hold, you're actually a lot less likely and so are they because it's a stabilizing uh, support. And you actually are in a great position to support them and not have them lose their balance and you not know about it. So it was, and for them then, I mean, what's exciting was people are like, oh, damn, oh, whoa, yeah, that's exciting. Oh my gosh. I mean, and so what was we found interesting is people who haven't been exposed to my stuff or you know, positive approach stuff over there uh, were shocked and amazed with so many things, which was fun because it's like bringing new awareness and knowledge is is always exciting. But for people who had watched videos, it was like, oh, was that the thing in the video that you did? 
So if I say that, oh, was that the thing in the video that you did, Greg? What does it mean about what you took in from the video? Well, it means that I might have some sort of understanding. And now all of a sudden, it's making sense. The penny is dropping. But is the penny going to drop in the right place? Because the workers have to follow policy. It's the policy, apparently, that seems to need some modification. Here was the really cool part, at least in two different or three, three different places where I was, um, the leaders of the organization and leaders in decision making were part of the day of training. And so what happened was they said, and as a matter of fact, guess who reached out and tried to catch me? Uh, who? The CEO of the company. <laughs> <laughs> And the takeaway from the whole day was I had no appreciation for what the workers, the direct workers do every day. And now I so appreciate the people that are the, doing the work that they're doing with the challenges that they're facing. And I also see why some of the stuff we do automatically without asking questions doesn't actually make sense. And we need to go back and raise our hand and say, I think we need to talk about this uh, differently. And so that was exciting. So those were all exciting things for me. But you're also always mining for nuggets. So did you pick up something down there that you went, damn, why didn't I think of that? Do you why have that light bulb that? moment? Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, I got to spend, I got to do one workshop alongside a woman named Maggie Beers. And Maggie Beers is an icon in the world of um, dining and eating and good food. She is, I'm trying to think who she would be. She's classic, oh, Martha Stewart. Except or, she hasn't been to jail. She hasn't been to jail, no, of course not. That yes, we know of. She's actually, a, I think a dame. I mean, she's actually been, you know, she has a formal position within Australia because of her skill and her expertise. But she's also been part of the Food Network over there and, and judging things. And and she's chosen in, I mean, because she's uh, she's uh, about the same age I am, maybe a bit ballpark me. She has chosen, instead of retiring and letting go or doing easy stuff, she's chosen to work within the age care industry to improve the quality and, and availability of good quality food for people living in residential programs by virtue of her expertise and bringing on experts in multi-textures and understanding different conditions to improve what people are being presented with so that they can enjoy eating when they're aging. And so it was, it was fun to be with her. It was also educational because, I mean, I'm not a chef. I don't do chef stuff. And so it was fun to participate in her part of the workshop and then we did stuff together, and that was really fun, too. Also nice to see that they're actually putting some thought and effort into it, because we've been through facilities where the food is uh, it, it's nourishing, it's going to sustain you, but um, sometimes you think maybe the mashed potatoes could be used to put up the wallpaper. Yeah, or finger foods are the same old finger foods that we give kids on a bad day, and it's like, this is supposed to be for the well-being of an elder, is are we actually looking at all that and how much is actually getting in and how much is being tossed out? And so, you know, you're really looking at that and looking at the equipment that people are trying to use and really investing in people and equipment and processes that tend to result in better outcomes for everybody. So well, what we're doing at dementia, she's doing there. <laughs> so that was cool. Tipa, th thank you very much. It sounds like you had a, a really wonderful experience and you came back with a little bit of knowledge. You imparted some knowledge. Any more trips planned? Well, I think we're probably looking at going back probably in a year, year and a half or so. Um, you know, we're looking at when should we go, you know, that kind of stuff. But we know that we raised a lot of, lot of excitement and uh, really got a lot of people thinking differently and and trying some things. And so I'm pretty sure that there's some additional future trips in our future. Tipa, thank you again. Thank you. This edition of Dementia Care Partners is brought to you by JoinImp.com, the smart call blocker for landlines. For more information on dementia care, visit tipasnow.com. If you're signed into your Spotify account, we'd love to get your feedback. How? Click into the episode details and look over the episode question and poll. Send us your comments and vote so we can answer your questions and better tailor this content to your needs. We look forward to hearing from you. Hi, I'm Tipa Snow, and you just found our YouTube channel and watched one of our videos. 
I'm the owner and founder of Positive Approach to Care. Thanks for watching. And if you liked, if you have a comment about, or you would, please share it with people you know. Oh, and if you haven't yet done it, consider subscribing. We'll let you know when the next new video comes out. And you might want to visit our website, www.tipasnow.com, where you'll find other resources as well. See you there.